More Useful Idiots. September 16, 2019 by Anna Von Reitz. So now we have Thomas Williams running around saying, Anna Von Reitz knows about this stuff because she is one of them. Once again, we see their modus operandi at work, always, accuse your opponent of being what you are yourself. Ask yourself, if Kim Gogwin, Thomas's pet, has all the secret account codes to the actual asset accounts, how did she get them? The deposit account records were stolen by the central banks and the accounts of the new asset ledgers were set up by the US military and its subcontractors at MIT. So how did she get them? A little birdie just sat on her shoulder one day and whispered in her ear? Hey, babe, here's the goods we want you to manage for us, put on a nice public show of philanthropy, but actually give the stuff only to those we control. I educated myself for over 40 years and my parents weren't stupid. My parents went to every town hall meeting and dragged me along. My mother worked on the farm union claims that resulted in the original Nasara effort. I worked on the American Indian movement claims that have been the spearhead to restore Native Americans to their proper standing. We aren't your average working class family, no, we are not. But it's not because the plotters responsible for this situation informed us about what they were doing. We come from, many generations ago, the actual German and French and Russian royals who were murdered and replaced just as the actual states of states were murdered and replaced via secretive substitution. We're not the Windsors, not the Paysors, not the Bankers Pursers, we are the actual royals, so I suppose we have a natural knack for seeing these mechanisms of government at work, but we are not the people that they confide in. Obviously. Our relationship with them is that of mongoose and snake, protector and thief, shepherd and wolf. We are the ones who paved the way for people to self-govern. It was our ancestors that created and enforced the Magna Carta. It was our ancestors who declared every American born on the soil of this country to be a sovereign in their own right. We are not elitists. We don't believe that men are supposed to rule over other men. We think that men have enough trouble just learning how to govern themselves. Unfortunately, learning to self-govern doesn't come easily or overnight. It unnerves them because we seemingly know everything. We see through them. We know their history. We know their mechanisms. We know who is responsible and accountable. And they can't figure out how we know this stuff. We've had no less than five missions come to our homes and plant bugs and listening devices all over, even in the bathrooms. They are trying to monitor our communications and find out who is feeding us all this information. We know the bugs are there, but we do nothing to remove them. We don't care if they listen in, 24-7. They can chase their tails and phantoms and be bored silly until the cows come home and meet them in the back pasture. All that they plot in secret is brought to light. Every lie they tell is detected. But then, I have given them warning, which they don't want to believe, that absolutely everything they do and think and say and feel, is already a known quantity. I have told them flatly that there is no use in trying to lie about anything, the judgment of God, the true God, is infallible, and that is because his knowledge is precise. I know these things, because I am part of the one true God. I can walk the time grid. I can pass between the worlds. I know my true identity. I am a child of the true God. And that scares them more than anything, the confirmation that there is a true God who sees their idolatry and doesn't like it, and who will take the actions he has promised, if they don't repent and turn aside from their evil. These Jews, and they are all Jews by blood, regardless of their religion, know that they have been here before, but they are having a tough time recalling the details. I have no such problem. Once again, they are being given the choice of Jeremiah, chapter 31, or, Jeremiah, chapter 51 joy or destruction life or death sovereignty under the true king or death under a false idol the true god our creator or mammon some of the central bankers many of them in fact are scared they know they have gone too far they know that the misery they have caused has been lifted up to the highest heaven they can feel the ground shifting under their feet getting ready to swallow them they can sense their carnival sideshow magic fading and the true magic entering in. And then you have men like Mark Carney, who are already dead, who have no fear of the living God, who think that nobody knows what they have done and nobody notices the self-interested evil they propose. 
Yes, they meet in secret, in a downstairs room, without windows, with locked doors and they face the east and they stupidly imagine that the true God does not see and hear absolutely everything. Uh duh. They think that there is nothing to stop them, that they hold all the cards. They can almost taste all the power they will have if they can just bamboozle the rest of the world one more time. Just a little longer, they think, and there will be endless credit that costs them nothing at all, and they will parcel it out like misers, and use it to pay off their cronies, and pay off the military leaders, and nobody will see through the fraud and nobody will call them on it. So they think, but the beginning of wisdom is the love of the true God. For one brings peace and light and life, and the other brings nothing but misery and death and destruction. Ahem, so if you wonder how I know these things, think back on what I am telling you and trace it all through for yourself. Just use your own horse sense and if you get stuck, ask, and it will be given to you. Including what to believe about me.